Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm starting a new series on my channel called 4x4. In this series, I'm going to be going over brands and what I think their four best products are and what their four worst products are. Right now, I currently have about five brands that I feel like I've tested enough of their products in order to be able to do this video for. I'll list those brands down below, or you know, I want to throw um like a little poll up to see what brand you guys want to see next. But for this video, we're kicking it off with e.l.f. So I'm going to tell you guys the four best products that I think e.l.f. has and the four worst products. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like the series idea. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, so I've got my notes right here. Let us first go... Let's start with the worst products and we'll end with the best products. The first worst product that I think e.l.f. has is their very first Mad for Matte palette. Let me scooch over so I can throw a picture up because I obviously don't have this palette anymore. I tried this palette out. It was the very first palette that I tried out from e.l.f. I have the AC on. Sorry guys, I just realized I had the AC on but it's so hot in here, I like, I'm gonna die. <sighs> so like I was saying, it was the very first palette I ever tried from e.l.f. and it really put me off eyeshadows from e.l.f. for a long time. I felt that it was very chalky. It was it was really hard to blend. The colors didn't really show up. It wasn't really pigmented. And I just wasn't a fan of the shade selection. I did try that palette out almost a year, year and a half ago at this point. So at some point in the future, I might rebuy it just to see maybe I just got a bad palette or maybe they've improved their formula because the rest of their palettes in the same packaging now are really good. Like I love every, well not every single, I love most of them. But that first one was just so bad and it put me off trying any other e.l.f. eyeshadows for a long time. The next worst product from e.l.f. has to be, for me, their foundation. This is just called the Flawless Finish Foundation. It's supposed to be SPF 15. First off, it's really hard to shade match. Just here. They don't have a great shade range. It's really hard to find a good match. I currently have Porcelain and Sand. They also changed the names of all of their foundation shades. So I don't even know if this is the current Porcelain and Sand because I forgot when I bought these. I've tried this foundation out with different primers. I've tried mixing in with other foundations, but ultimately I just can't get this foundation to work for me, especially with the shades. Like I can almost never get a shade that would actually work for me. That being said, with its affordable price point, this was one of the first foundations that I ever tried. But there are so many better foundations at the drugstore that are around this price. There's, for combination skin for myself personally, this one didn't work out. The next product from e.l.f. that I think is a total dud, most of their liquid lipsticks. These are, okay, so I'm gonna say the matte liquid lipsticks. These are so drying these oh my god they feel like a powder i don't know if it's supposed to be a cream to powder but you know i've never seen another liquid lipstick that does this but it applies and then immediately dries down feels like you're literally wearing a powder on your lips it cracks immediately it makes you look so much older it, it looks bad no matter what shade you try. I had a couple of shades. I picked up their liquid lipstick in Coffee and in Blushing Rose, because Blushing Rose is a beautiful shade, right? It should look like this. <laughs> this is actually a YSL lip stain, which is kind of, it's different, it's a stain versus a liquid lipstick, but comparing this to like an ABH lip, to a Jeffree Star lip, hell, to a ColourPop lip, this is more drying. I really wouldn't recommend any of their liquid lipsticks because unless you really want the um, the butthole lip effect, these would probably do really good for that. Okay, and the last product from e.l.f. that I really don't like are just all of their mascaras. I've tried several of their mascaras. They transfer like crazy. They are flaky. They don't do anything for my lashes. They're just... Mm, mm. I know it is a very affordable mascara, but you can get my favorite mascara for $3 from Ulta, and that is the Essence Mascara. Go for that one. Don't go for e.l.f. mascaras. Just none of them have worked for me. Upper lash line, lower lashes, nothing. Nothing. All of that out of the way. Now that you know what to steer clear from, let's get into their best products, because they have some real gems at 
crazy affordable prices. And the first gems, as long as you skip the first one, the rest of their eyeshadow palettes in the 10 pans. I have the Jewel Pop one, which is this really colorful, beautiful set right here. I, ooh. I have their Holy Smokes palette, which is their Smoky Eye palette. I have their newest one in this packaging, which is the Rose Gold Sunset palette. I have a whole video on this one if you want to check it out. I'll throw that up in the cards. I have their Everyday Smoky, which is kind of like their like naked... Oh, I forgot that this happens. That's the only downside. I have only had that happen with one palette, but that shade did pop out and I have included back in. This is like their Everyday Smoky palette as opposed to their Holy Smokes, which is for more dramatic looks. And then I have their Mad for Matte 2, which is my personal favorite next to the rose gold sunset. This one just screams fall. I love this orange, I love these shades. You can get a whole look out of this palette. <sighs> okay, the rose gold sunset and the everyday smoky are not totally matte, but the rest are. And the fact that they can come out with such great blendable pigmented matte shades for $10, you're paying a dollar a pan here, is incredible. Like, I don't think any other drugstore brand, maybe Wet n Wild, but mm, can come out with this kind of quality at this price. I talk a whole lot more about these e.l.f. palettes in that video on the Rose Gold Sunset palette, so just make sure you check that one out if you want to see me go in depth with some swatches and some more information. But these, you can't go wrong with the rest of them. Just, just skip the first one. Don't get the first one. Okay, so their next product that I think is really good, I don't currently have because I did use one up, their primers. They have primers of all sizes. They have like a big primer that you can get for $10. They have like their regular sizes, which one were about $6. I think their pore filling primer and their hydrating primer. So they come in the pink bottle and the blue bottle. I think those are really good. If you're not sure if primer is something you want to include in your routine, if you just want to test something out, that's a great place to start. I always recommend trying a cheaper version of a product that you're new to just to see if you can actually fit it into your routine. Like with skincare, when I first started using serums, I didn't immediately go out and buy a Sunday Riley serum, you know? I started with the serums I found at TJ Maxx, just so I could get used to it in my routine. And then if I liked it, if I thought it made a difference, I moved up. Do the same thing with your makeup. That's, I think that's like the purpose of e.l.f. is not only just to give affordable options, but just to get your foot in the door without breaking the bank. So their primers are really good. I haven't tried the green bottle, which is supposed to cancel redness. I'm not sure if it actually does, but they're hydrating and their pore filling primers are really good and they last forever. The next product, I actually can't find it, but it's one of my favorite lipsticks. It comes in packaging like this. They have a line of lipsticks called Moisturizing Bullet Lipsticks, and they're incredible. They're the most comfortable bullet lipstick that you'll find for a couple of dollars. I had a perfect nude shade, and I'm very upset that I can't find it. It's somewhere in my collection, but it's a perfect nude shade. If I can find it, I'll throw a picture right here but it's just really comfortable, doesn't bleed. I didn't even, I don't think I even used a lip liner with this one and it didn't bleed, it just feels comfortable and it wears off gracefully throughout the day, which is great if you're wearing it to school or to work because you don't want it to look like, oh, you're definitely like, there's there should have been lipstick there and now there's not lipstick there. No, it wears off gracefully so that you could reapply it if you wanted to, but if you don't want to reapply it, it doesn't look crazy. Lately, I've been reaching more for liquid lipsticks, but whenever I'm feeling a moisturizing lipstick, I go for e.l.f. It looks just like this packaging, but this is actually their lip scrub, which is also another good product, but it's not my top four. And the last great product from e.l.f. is actually a collaboration. It's a collaboration with Alyssa Ashley. It's their lip gloss. I picked up two of these. <laughs> I absolutely love the shade. It's called Nude Rose. It's really a universal color. And I think Alyssa Ashley did a great job on this collaboration. I kept this one in the packaging because it looks so pretty. It's got her like signature on the bottle. It's got a really great applicator. It looks like a little high heeled shoe, but because it's shaped like that, you can really get into like the corners of your lips without making a mess. And I think with a lip gloss, it's really easy to just get outside the lines and then it's like you're screwed. But this is such a great lip gloss. It lasts well. It doesn't taste bad. Like I hate when lip glosses taste bad. Urban Decay. <laughs> 
but this is such a good lip gloss i actually had to i had to wait for like the third restock i think and i didn't even get it online like i kept trying to buy it online and it immediately sold out and i can see why i actually have an elf store in a mall that's not too far from me and i was just in there looking around and they had a whole bunch of these up by the cash wrap and i was like you know what i'm gonna take two of these because <laughs> i was so excited to finally find it like ah oh. this one is six dollars six dollars for a great lip gloss highly recommend you try this one out it's amazing okay so that's it for this very first four by four i hope you guys liked it let me know down below what products you like from elf and which ones you think everyone else should stay away from as well don't forget to vote in the poll at the beginning of this video on which brand you guys want to see next and i'll see you in my next video bye